Okay, in this problem, we're going to look at a problem involving departure functions. And here we have a well-insulated throttling valve. And we're asked to determine the departure function at the inlet conditions given information about the process change. So we know the entrance and exit conditions. And we want to know how far the enthalpy deviates from the ideal gas value at the inlet conditions. And so the best way to start a problem like this is to actually do an energy balance. And the energy balance on a, a well-insulated throttling valve is pretty simple. Right? So we expect that the enthalpy change, if there's no heat or work done during this process, the enthalpy change of the fluid should be equal to, to zero. And we can express this in terms of the departure functions as being the departure function, so the difference between the real and ideal gas states at the outlet conditions, which I'll call state two, plus the ideal gas change of the enthalpy, which is equal to the integral of CP dt. But in this case, we're given that the heat capacity is constant, which allows us to express this as a heat capacity times the temperature difference from the outlet to the inlet conditions. And then finally, we subtract off the departure function of the inlet conditions. And in all of these terms should be equal to zero. Okay, one thing that we can realize, an approximation that we can make if we want to determine the enthalpy departure function of the inlet state, is to notice that the pressure is much higher at the inlet state, 2.5 megapascals, than it is at the outlet state. At the outlet state, we're at atmospheric pressure. And in generally, gases under atmospheric pressure behave very much as ideal gases. And so, here we can say that a reasonable approximation, because the pressure is so low, is that the enthalpy departure function of the outlet state is close to zero. All right, so that's true. That simplifies our life considerably. That we can now just plug in values. So zero is equal to the heat capacity of the ideal gas, which is 45 joules per mole Kelvin. And multiply that by the temperature difference, the temperature drop in this case, which is 520 minus 600 Kelvin. And then we have our departure function in here, which again is the difference between the actual condition of the fluid and the ideal gas state. And so then, obviously, it's a very simple algebraic problem. And we ultimately find, after doing a small unit conversion, that the departure function at the inlet conditions is equal to negative 3.6 kilojoules per mole. And this is pretty typical for an enthalpy departure function. Um, enthalpy departure functions will almost always be negative because the interactions between the gas phase molecules will tend to be attractive. So they are stabilizing relative to the case of an ideal gas where, of course, the molecules are not interacting. And so we expect to get a negative sign, and we do. And so this problem, again, basically illustrates the use of the departure function method of calculating changes of states for real fluids uh, using very simple algebra.